So now we're going to move into uh, the last technical presentation. Um, how to utilize the power of air curtains to ensure a better indoor air quality while saving valuable energy. This presentation uh, is by Jan Svalenson. Sorry if I butchered the name. Uh, he is the business development director, uh, Frico AB Sweden. Please help me welcome him to the stage. Uh, thank you very much. It's, it's a pleasure to be here among so many distinguished speakers before me. And we have talked a lot about the indoor air quality. Uh, I heard before that uh, it shouldn't be any more presentation, so I'm sorry. But uh, I will try to be so concrete and precise because I know that something good is waiting outside as well. So. Bear, bear with me a couple of minutes. Indoor air quality, I will attack it from a different angle. So while saving, I will come to that. Because we heard during the presentation, that's been very good now, that we have talked about indoor air quality and how can we get some money from that and how can we retrofit so I think I maybe have some answers to that so these are the points I will go through I will, maybe you're surprised that we're going to talk about the cold rooms etc but uh, we, we also need a good indoor uh, quality <laughs> indoor air quality in the in the cold rooms you will see that later I'm going to give you some case studies as well. And also we're going to see how we can make money on using our units in this sector. Importance of cold chain and cold rooms. I think we are in the right area here now because this is the sustainability area. And... Uh, I guess many of you have heard of Agenda 2030 with that the United Nations created a while ago. And there is one specific goal that is very interesting for us when we talk about supply chain and the cold chain, and that is target 12. And actually, there is one paragraph, 12.3, that is interesting for us. Because I don't know if you know, but uh, we have a big problem today with food waste. Actually, one third of all food that we produce are wasted. We throw it away or it gets destroyed. So one of the goals in Agenda 2030 is to half this food waste until 2030. So we have a couple of years left to work on that. So, by the way, when we eat out there, remember to eat everything on the plate. So no food waste, please. So, and they target on the supply chain. And supply chain for us is the cold chain. Cold chain means uh, the way from the farmer all the way to the consumer. So there are different steps that the food eventually has to pass. Uh, until it reached the consumer, and it has to be protected very well during the whole way. So why focus on the cold chain? Well, as, as I said before, one third of all the food is wasted. That's, that's enormous. So let's say, and of course, all that food wasted, we need a lot of energy to produce that. And if we turn that let's say, all that energy and see what kind of carbon footprint that would give, actually, food would be the third biggest, uh, let's say, player when it comes to making the, its uh, carbon foot, footprint. So it's a huge target, it's a huge challenge for us to, to protect the cold chain. And of course, cold chain, that's interesting to us because we 
as, as Frico, representing Frico, working with air curtains worldwide, and actually world leader in uh, Frico air, in, in, air, in air curtains. Then, of course, we are recommending air curtains in the different steps. There are some um, basic, let's say, rules about air curtains. What happens is, of course, if you don't protect the door, then you get the warm air from the street coming into the premises. Cold, expensive air goes out. We were talking about retrofit before, during the panel. And I mean, here is a way to retrofit these premises by using the air curtains in a very simple way. And it's not cold air that we are losing, conditioning air that goes out in the street. We can also receive a lot of smoke or contaminated air from the street if we don't protect the air, the, protect the door. So here is an easy way to retrofit the premises. So what happens when we have a door that is not protected? We have the shop on the left side. Warm air is lighter and it streams into the shop and we are losing all the cold air. This is all basic for many of you, of course. But anyhow, we also using thermo camera to show. Now we put on the air curtain and bit by bit it pushes back the cold air into the shop. No, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. The cold air is going out from the shop because we have no air curtain here. Same thing here. We can show that the smoke is going in on the top that symbolizes warm air. But you, when it goes go down, the cold air is pushing out the smoke because the door is unprotected. So those are the rules behind the, the air curtain, so to say. So what are people using today instead? And if we go back to cold storage, they are using PVC strips. PVC strips, easy to install, not so expensive, but after a while, they, they ruin, they get ruined. And uh, you work with forklift trucks in logistic centers and they easily go through very quickly and they hit these PVC strips. And you have cold and warm air meeting, so you have condensation and you have uh, low temperatures, so the ice is sticking on this. From the beginning, very transparent PVC strips, but after a while you don't see what's on the other side. So actually we have a lot of accidents going on in the logistics centers when the forklift trucks pass very quickly. So we have a problem with condensation. And condensation, well, you know, we talked about that before as well. If you have a lot of condensation, it builds up. And in this case, it's building up ice. And here are some bad examples if you don't have a proper protection on, the, on, the, on a specific door. So, solution, well, for me, easy. You put the air curtain, and you should use an air curtain that is, that is covering the whole door, the complete door, to get what we say an invisible door. And going back to the graphics that we had before, it's not 100% protection, but still up to 80-90% it can prevent the cold air leaking out from, from the shop or from the cold store. Here, now, now we start to work with the air curtain and you can see bit by bit how it's pushing back the cold air back into the left side, which is the shop or the cold store. Same thing with the smoke, not, the, not even in the top, it's entered. So, yes, it's preventing the smoke to getting in. Air curtains in cold room. The problem is that we have this ice building up, and the ice building up means that we have a lot of uh, extra ice on the cooling equipment, so you need to, 
you need to do a lot of defrosting as well. But with the air curtain, you have a good, much cleaner environment, and you have a better, let's say, visibility on the other side. And now, an example, we have an air curtain running, but now we turn it off on the left pictures and look around the lamp, you see what's happening. All the condensation builds up, and bit by bit, you have ice building up. We do the same thing on the other side. We open up, but we are leaving the air curtain running. And you see a clear difference. Maybe you see, I said before, it's not 100% prote protection. Maybe you see some condensation, but, but it's a huge difference anyhow. And of course, by having a more even temperature, temperature in the cold room, we have less impact on the cooling equipment as well. The cooling equipment is working more smooth. The load is less all the time. So, optimal solution, you put an air curtain, for the cool room, but not only for the cool room, but also for any supermarket or any shop where it's needed. Summarizing some benefits. Yes, I talked about the visibility, less accidents, reduced ice buildup, frost and condensation. We, we will have, we have, and you say, I will show, I'm not telling, only telling that, but I'm going to show you a few case studies where we really show how we can save the, uh, the kilowatt and improve safety and hygiene and less maintenance. And of course, as I said from the beginning, we are protecting the cold chain. We are saving food. Case studies, we've done a couple or quite, quite a lot because yes, I say that we save energy, but what we are, we are really measuring uh, not only in cold storage, but also supermarkets, the difference with and without the cold storage. Now, this picture was a little bit distorted, but anyhow, I can tell you, this is a 20 square meter a deep freeze uh, storage with a negative temperature of uh, 23 degrees. This is made in Thailand and it's 30 degrees plus outside, so it's a big delta T. But anyhow, we were measuring the energy consumption, and during this month, and they were using PVC strips, we had a uh, uh, consumption of these 2,754. Taking them away, wow, now it's even more distorted, but I can tell you, we managed to reduce the consumption with 25%. So taking away the plastic strips, putting up <clears throat> the air curtain, we were reducing the, the consumption. Well, you, you can see from 2,700 down to 2,280. Another picture. Here we have six cold rooms. And with this consumption, we did the same thing, took away the PVC strips, installed the air curtain, and then we also managed, I think we even came down to 27% in lower consumption. So, and I mean, kilowatt, you know, electricity is getting more and more expensive. So it's really worth, and we talked before about total life cost of the units. Air curtains more expensive than PVC strips, etc. of course, but in the long run, it, uh, it pays off. We did the same thing with a convenience store, a supermarket, and they had this consumption uh, uh, for a month for this unit. And we installed the air curtain and we managed to go from 3,300 down to 2,400 kilowatts. So money talks, again, kilowatts is uh, expensive and it's going to be even more expensive, I'm afraid. You know what's going on all around in the world. So less consumption, less condensation, less maintenance, and better visibilities, and less accidents. We are using other ways to, to measure. 
how, how it works. We use CFD analysis, computer, computation, uh, computational fluid dynamics, and actually what we did, we, this is a store here in Dubai, and the red spot or the violet spot in the middle, that's the air curtain, and inside is the shop. So what we did, we measured how it works with or without the air curtain running. And actually, we are at 40 now, but during the summer we will get up to 46 degrees. So, and inside, yes, they wanted 22 uh, degrees. So they had this when the door was closed. So what we did instead, when we turned off, we opened the door and turned and didn't have the air curtain running. You could see with the help of the CFD analysis what happened in the store. The average temperature raised from 22 to 28. And this is a nice tool. I mean, here you can see once again, <clears throat> not in reality really, but how the CFD analysis can show how, how it works when the air curtain is not working. Here is the same thing, and we have the air curtain on, and it works more or, like, more or less like, like a door. And here we see the, let's say, the uh, airflow going over the door, protecting the door and keeping the warm air outside. So, this was Frico's angle to indoor <laughs> air quality, and uh, but I think it's I think it's necessary. It's nice to talk about all the on on an academic level how what how the importance of a good indoor air quality. But it's also very important to link it to concrete practical cases and see how it really pays off. I mean, otherwise it's very easy for for a shop owner to buy a cheaper unit or keep on with these plastic strips, etc., etc. if we don't can tell him that uh, actually you should change, you should pay a little extra, and then you, you will save in the long run uh, money. So um, I remember I got the question, what is my mo favorite um, building regulation? I think it was from a panel discussion here before. And I think these sustainable development goals especially 12.3, that's, that's a good one, and I keep for that one. Maybe the time running out, but anyhow, when you have time coming back, take a look at the, our installations here, because we have down in the coffee shop and, in, in the, and also at the main entrance and at the side entrance, we have our air curtains installed, together with a nice ventilation system from System Air as well. So, I try to wrap it up quickly. So, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Jan. Uh, that was a very good presentation. I've always advocated for air curtains. I think it's just sim as simple as closing a door. Yeah. Uh, it's just it's an invisible. Uh, it's an invisible one, Great. and um, we we all you know know and uh, think that air curtains should be used just I think one of the things that maybe need to be addressed are standards to to test and, and verify air curtains uh, I think this is something maybe the industry needs to to work at uh, as well uh, thank you thank you very much please help me uh, give a round of applause okay. to Jan okay. thank you thank you guys